Before we get any further into the video, have you checked out my Spotify playlist? I add new stuff to it pretty much any time I find a cool new song. So I update it usually a couple times a week with some new stuff. So if you are looking for new music to check out, hit the link in the description of this video. So I have some good news. Uh, at least I think this is gonna be good news. I can't imagine that there's anybody out there who would think this is bad news, but the Black Dahlia murder are back. I did not ever think that I would say that sentence because as most of you probably know, Trevor Sternad, the front man of Black Dahlia murder, uh, unfortunately passed away back in May. I think it was, uh, took his own life. Very sad because everybody agrees that Trevor was an awesome human being, great front man, tragic loss for the scene and obviously his friends and family. Someone like Trevor who is such a unique special person both in terms of like as a vocalist but just like the sort of his persona which i'll talk about later um not an easy person to uh replace right i mean how can you fill his shoes so i was very surprised when i saw this on Instagram yesterday, this is from the Black Dahlia Murder's official account. It says, the Black Dahlia Murder announced the October 28th show, a celebration of the life and legacy of Trevor Sternad. Michigan's Black Dahlia Murder show have just announced a show in Detroit on October 28th at St. Andrews Hall, which would be a celebration of the life and legacy of Trevor Sternad. This concert marks the band's return to the stage after the untimely passing of their beloved frontman Trevor Sternad on 11th of May this year, founding member Brian Eschbach will be putting down his guitar and moving on the role of lead vocals moving forward, a decision that wasn't made lightly when the band got together to discuss their future after they started to work through the initial shock and grief of losing their best friend. Stepping back into the Black Dahlia Murder family is guitarist Ryan Knight, awesome uh, guitarist. Support from the show will come from Darkest Hour and Play Gears. Tickets go on sale this Friday, September 16th at 10 a.m. Eastern. I would imagine that those will sell out in like literally one minute. So for those of you watching on YouTube, unfortunately, I am quite certain that that is sold out. Now, what I wasn't sure of is it sounded like this might just be like a one-off tribute show kind of thing, right? Like they just decided to do this one show to sort of honor Trevor and then send the band off and they would go on to, you know, do whatever else they were going to do with their lives. But that is actually not true. That's not what happened. The band, at least as far as I can tell from this story here from our friends at Decibel, shout out to Albert and everybody else over there. It sounds like the band is actually going to be like back for real only with now Brian on vocals. So here is what they have to say. I'm not gonna read the whole thing cause it's long. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Essentially, here is what it says. The Black Dahlia Murder will continue as a working band. Guitarist and co-founder Brian Eschbach will move to vocalist and be replaced on guitar by Ryan Knight, who left the band amicably in 2016. All the band members say that Eschbach's move is the only way forward. Eschbach has been with the band since the beginning in Oak Park, Michigan in 2001 and honed the group's identity. Inserting an outsider as front man would never work because this band's close-knit, almost familial ethic. So I wanted to just talk a little bit kind of about this because I have, I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. The first one, let's just talk for a minute about Trevor, uh, who I did not know personally. We had, you know, many mutual friends, of course, because I feel like Trevor is one of those people that pretty much everybody in the scene, if you weren't friends with him, you had some mutual friends because he was just that kind of guy. Super friendly, approachable, like just genuinely nice guy, super relatable. And that's part of what makes it so difficult to replace him. I thought that this video from uh, Metal Sucks back in 2020 really did a good job of kind of painting a picture of who he was and sort of the space that he occupied in the scene. Well, actually, before we do that, just for one second, for anybody who maybe hasn't heard them, we'll listen to this really quick, just so you know what they sound like. Super tight death metal. Still sounds great. This is from 2007. This still sounds great. And you can see just from this video, I think what made the Black Dahlia murder so special. I mean, musically, obviously they were super, super tight. You're not gonna find many bands who are as tight or tighter. I mean, there's really no bands that are tighter than Black Dahlia murder, maybe like Meshuggah, but that's the level they were at in terms of tightness. Incredibly good musicians, super good players. Now, aside from that, to me, what made Black Dahlia murder stand out 
is just, I mean, you watch this video, it seemed like so much fun, right? They made death metal fun and death metal is not a, uh, you know, it's not the most fun genre in the world. Let's put it that way. A lot of people there who are like very, um, very sort of concerned with putting out an image of being these like serious, you know, badass guys or whatever, took themselves very seriously, a little bit uptight, you know, made sure to never smile anywhere or ever joke about anything, you know, whether they were actually capable of making jokes or not, I don't know. But, you know, when you think about death metal, uh, fun-loving, approachable guys is not exactly uh, what comes to mind. But with Black Dahlia Murder, that's exactly who they were. Like, even without listening to the music, you go, man, this looks like fun. I want to hang out with these guys. I want to go to that show. Even to this day, there really isn't another band that kind of occupies that space, right? At least not that I can think of. Um, there's no death metal bands that have that kind of like chill, fun kind of character. Um, and I think a big part of that, which a lot of people I think maybe don't realize this, is that Black Dahlia Murder musically is death metal, but these guys are from the hardcore scene. These are like Michigan hardcore guys. Obviously, they love death metal. I mean, they're fantastic at it, but they're not really death metal guys, if that makes sense. They're really more like hardcore guys. That has always like come through to me like hardcore you know uh it has its faults as much as it sort of seems like it can be kind of an unfriendly unwelcoming scene it's really not i mean hardcore they don't take themselves too seriously for the most part it's like this and you can see here i mean they're not dressed they don't look like death metal dudes in this video do they they're wearing like camo and stuff like that they look more like a hardcore band than a death metal band right for example i found this um brand new picture of them with the current lineup he's wearing a descendants shirt here not very metal <laughs> How dare you wear a pop punk shirt in your death metal promo photo? Didn't anybody give you the employee handbook? Look, page 32, you can only wear black shirts with indecipherable spiky logos on them. You're going to turn that shirt inside out for the rest of your shift or you can go home and change your choice. But either way, I don't want to see you wearing a pop punk band in a promo photo again, young man. But in all seriousness, to me, that is what was like extra special about the Black Dahlia murder is just that they seem like such chill, fun guys. And in particular, Trevor, he was really kind of the face of the band, obviously, like every front man is. And I think that that sort of like just warm friendliness about him really comes through, such as murder in this here. video with metal where he takes you on a tour of his house. Into my humble home and show you around, show you some of my nerdy collections of video games. His CDs, nerdy collections. Metal shirt. Yeah, man, uh, come on in, have a look around. Uh, just very Wipe sad to feet. lose him. I mean, All what a right. great guy. Hey guys, welcome. Uh, to if I was him, I I might not have uh, I might not have been so willing to show where I live because you know there's a lot of weirdos out there. Some uh, you can imagine here, but here's the thing. I was gonna say, you can imagine somebody showing up at Trevor's house wanting to like listen to death metal and play video games with him, but Trevor would probably be like, "All right, yeah, come on in, man." <laughs> to Casa de Sternad, we're gonna have a look around. Uh, wipe the poop off your feet, please. So here's his uh, like his Had collection of death metal shirts. shirts. A lot. This is my Man of War shirt, one of my recent favorites. Dramalek, this is cool. Got a few Dramalek Very shirts. deep cut rare. there, Dramalek. I remember them from back in the 90s. Goat penis. Very obscure. This out because it's goat penis. Great cool. band name. We <laughs> this is my favorite part. This is the part I was looking for. I love this part. Up here, we start with a brutal death metal, alphabetized. <laughs> That comes down to about, <laughs> about here. So, I mean, this is a lot of brutal death metal. That is a lot of brutal death metal, my friend. <laughs> We're just trying to keep it to like the top 1200 most essential releases in the genre. Top 1200 brutal death metal albums. This is a lot of cut up naked ladies on the front of CDs, that's for sure. <laughs> a lot of cut up naked ladies on the cover of the CDs. What a sense of humor. I mean, I feel like to me, this is the essence of Trevor is like, obviously he is a mega fan, uh, but at the same time, he also has a good sense of humor about it and understands, you know, that death metal is ridiculous in so many ways too. Trevor is the kind of guy who would have an answer for this question. 
Does that include both genres, technical brutal death metal and brutal technical death metal? Trevor would have an answer for that. He would say, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the brutal technical death metal section is over here. This is just my technical brutal death metal. I have um, a few systems from this company, it's Analog. Got a s they make oh, um, okay. it's a systems. This is I the see. first one they did, uh, the Nintendo. I want one of those. Uh, it's like made with like airplane aluminum. And oh. And it has the with uh, an EverDrive. The innards of a real Nintendo. The man has an EverDrive, a true retro gamer. The man has an EverDrive. What more do you need to know? There's a quote from this article that I think uh, summed it up really well. Ellis says that Sternad's superpower was his ability to make people feel seen. People feel like this guy sees who I am and we're friends forever now, he explains. The next time he saw them, he would remember exactly who they were and what they talked about. People just felt this intense connection to him. When one of your friends dies, you go through all these things in your head. I wondered if I was more like Trevor, if he would still be around. Like I said, I did not know Trevor, but that's what everybody says about him is exactly that. Everyone says that, you know, after you saw him, you just like, if you just met him, whatever, for a few minutes, you felt like you were his friend. And I think when it comes to like, I don't know, replacing him, because I don't know if replacing him is exactly what they're doing here, but filling his shoes, when it comes to that, I mean, that's incredibly hard to do because it's not just that he was a vocalist, it's that he played that role in the band and in the scene of being that sort of like really welcoming guy. He did a lot to put other bands on, you know, as far as like, um, promoting other bands that he thought were cool, that were up and coming. I mean, he was really that guy in the scene. So incredibly difficult to replace him, you know, because really like someone like him is not just a vocalist. They're like the mascot of the band, right? Like people identify with this person, which is why oftentimes when a vocalist leaves a band, a lot of the fans abandon the band. They don't like him anymore because it's almost like taking sides in a breakup. You know, if, if two of your friends break up, you're not going to be friends with both of them anymore. You got to pick one side because one of them is your friend. So with something like Black Dahlia Murder, like how do you replace someone like Trevor? Who could you bring in as an outsider well, you really couldn't, right? I mean, the only thing they could have done, which I, I didn't realize that Brian could sing like this. A apparently he can. Bringing in someone from the band, especially Brian, who from what I understand, wrote a lot of the music. And I, I think he wrote a lot, of, a lot of the lyrics too. I could be wrong about that. Like literally Brian was kind of the other half of Black Dahlia Murder. Really like maybe the only other person on earth who could have stepped into that role. So I think it's really cool they came up with that as, as sort of a way to move forward. Because remember, one thing to keep in mind is like, this is their job. These guys are like around 40. You know, imagine not only losing one of your best friends, but also like having to change careers after investing 20 years of your life into this thing to have the rug pulled out from underneath you, just suddenly have to reboot your whole life, lose your friend and find a new job. I mean, imagine how incredibly stressful and difficult and terrifying that must be. So obviously it's tragic to have lost Trevor, but I'm happy that they're finding a way to move forward. And also I'm happy to see that people seem really supportive about this because you know, changing members, especially in a situation like this, is really touchy. Sometimes it can go badly. But from what I have seen, people are 100% supportive of this, which is awesome to see because, you know, I mean, the metal scene can be a little bit toxic and not so supportive at times. And, you know, in a situation like this, this is where you really want to see people come together to help out guys in a band who clearly need it. You know, if anything, this in a way, well, I think, I don't want to say only make the band stronger because of course, losing someone like Trevor is a blow that you'll never totally recover from. But, um, I think this is really going to bring them and their fan base together. I think that people are really going to come together to support these guys. Uh, I would bet you a lot of money that their next album and tour is going to be the biggest one that they've ever done because people want to show their support for the band, which it's really cool to see. This is one of those times where, you know, as much as I'm critical of the metal scene, I think usually for good reason, this is one of those times where I think we're going to see people really come together and support people who need it. So I think it's really cool to see this. Shout out to everyone in the band. Again, I don't know these guys, but I have never heard a bad thing about any of them ever from anybody. So uh, universally agreed upon as awesome guys. Clearly a great band and uh, happy to see them back in action. And I wish them the best.